Thank you, Milton. Um, yeah, I did put in my own money into those things before I tell anybody to do anything into, um, you know. It, so either way, a little bit of uh, my intro is uh, uh, I am a part of a, a startup company that uh, along with Fruit Street, I'm involved in another processes, but that's how I came to VC. And uh, if you want to find me, those are my Twitter handle, at Wound Physician. And if you uh, hashtag removing barriers to healing, you'll get my social media presence. Uh, I mean, uh, please uh, do that if you can. Um, so disclosures, I'm a part owner in a company called, a telemedicine company called epiphany.com and uh, uh, Fruit Street. And uh, the talk really was about uh, concierge medicine. And uh, uh, my uh, partner in crime, Dr. Asif Ali, was supposed to be here. Uh, he had an emergency, and two days ago, Milton calls me up and say, can you take care of it? I said, anything for Milton. Gave up my clinic days, and I came here for him. So. Um, but I do do something called a subscription medicine, wherein I, I take uh, care of obesity medicine patients, and also I do do um, uh, uh, cash-only uh, wound care, uh, which I have done. I'll, I'll explain it to you. So the objectives of the talk is to discuss uh, subscription and concierge model for uh, wound care, obesity, and infectious disease and also think out of the box in delivery of uh, solutions. So this is kind of focusing on my practice. So uh, before that, there is, I just want to go through the definitions of uh, concierge medicine. It's a uh, uh, delivery of healthcare services in patients without constraints of insurance companies. It's a direct relationship between the patients and the doctors and is, uh, can be billed monthly or yearly. Or sometimes it could be the a membership medicine, that can be the term used sometimes, wherein uh, the people, uh, the patient can have paid annual fee and a retainer. But uh, uh, in these practices sometimes, depending upon the patient size, the, the doctors tend to limit their uh, number of people. And this whole conscious medicine concept started around 1996 in Seattle. But there's a little difference between conscious medicine and direct primary care. Uh, direct primary care is that that is involving uh, uh, primary care providers, and there they just give up on uh, services like Medicare, and they cannot accept any other uh, services uh, except direct. I think when they do that, they, they need to give up on Medicare patients for uh, two or three years if they want to go back to Medicare. The reasons why people get into conscious medicine is dwindling reimbursements uh, and uh, declining in, in uh, costs uh, of reimbursements, uh, declining in reimbursements and overhead that is continuing, burnout, long hours, and of course uh, our friendly EHRs, and also decreased family time and uh, uh, problems with work-life balance. I have a problem with work-life balance because I don't have one. Okay, so what, what I've done is I've coined a different term, work-life integration. Maybe you might want to note that when your wife or your husband asks you, where are you? So what I've done is I've said, you know, let me integrate my work and lifestyle in that. So I, I do get my exercise. I do try to get my family time. So anyhow, here is my uh, topics that I will go through. I do something called as platelet-rich plasma in wound care where I, I, I have them pay some uh, funds for that. The patient takes care of the funds or the costs of it. And I do do cash-only obesity medicine practice, and I'll explain about telemedicine, uh, where I've done uh, uh, telemedicine also in, with that. So when it comes to wound care, most of the patients of wound care, they don't have much payment money, and mostly they are vulnerable patients, and uh, insurance models doesn't help with these, uh, uh, with these processes much uh, in, in the form of uh, cash. Uh, so I had to think out of the box, and I had to come up with the reasoning of why and how we can do this for wound care. The first reason is we have to come up, unless we think about innovative ways, we cannot come up with solutions for this. And uh, when we do this kind of uh, conscious medicine model, the patient knows how much this is going to cost them. And the provider knows what how, and how much they can assure the patient. And there is no third party payments. And they they, and then you're able to give them the real value, wherein sometimes we can think about preventive models that is real value. And of course, where if we can 
do a real well care model and subscribe to that, then that would be a good thing. Then we just have to do the right thing, you see. So it is an example of 74 cases of uh, platelet-rich plasma that I have used uh, over time. Uh, I charge 600 bucks for that. Normally, a plastic surgical service, if they do PRP, charges around 1,500. And I just made only a little bit of amount, and then basically uh, just wanted to show this case series. And, uh, I'll go through this uh, next part is my obesity two case studies. Uh, this is a gentleman who had knee replacement five times uh, in uh, over over the time of uh, uh, 2011 to 2013, and uh, basically he had a weight of uh, almost 400 pounds uh, with BMI 54, and uh, we had got enrolled. And over one year, he had a significant improvement in weight loss of 107 pounds. He gained a little bit, but I did some testing that showed that uh, he had. Uh, um, I was extremely overweight, still am a little overweight, uh -huh. and uh, I decided it was time, through conversations with you, that it was time that I did something to make me feel better in life. How much were you weighing? Around 393 pounds, I think. Yeah, 393 pounds. At, at one point, I was over 400. I'm a type 2 diabetic. Okay. I uh, take a lot of medicine, uh -huh. which through this program, it's helped me cut that medicine down. You're 393 pounds, and your hemoglobin A1C was very high. It was a machine nine, nine that is there so uh, beside it that is called a uh, uh, bioimpedance machine. We made this decision to start the program with us. Yes. And uh, slowly but steadily, we started using the the Fruit Street app and the a low carb diet. Yes. And My mobility now probably is at least twice to three times better than what it was when we started. Yeah. The program, the, the, the food program, the, the fruit street and the low carb was tough at first, but once you get used to it, yeah. I'm used to eating that style of food now. Yeah. It makes a big difference. Yeah. I, I'm not hungry. Yeah. It feels really good, and I don't know if I can go back to the other. Yeah, I mean, you, you so I will push through quickly because of time shortage. He is well satiated, very happy about the program. And uh, this is the second case uh, uh, of a patient who is uh, joined the weight loss program with quick results, uh, uh, wherein we have uh, helped him with weight loss of around uh, 28 uh, pounds uh, in less than two and a half uh, months. And if you see, this is the bioimpedance testing where I track, I track these wounds and, uh, sorry, I track this uh, weight and uh, uh, I'm trying to build a database for this. So uh, the next part where I want to talk about is a part of the wound care app that I'm building up. If you see, this is like a technology uh, with HIPAA compliant wound care solution that I'm trying to make sure that we build a solution for them. And telemedicine, if you see, has, is changing rapidly and it is helping in establishing a roadmap for interoperability, if, if we can do that. And also, it is shifting the day care delivery markets of uh, uh, this process. And of course, reducing the cost in healthcare and delivering high cost will, uh, sorry, low cost and high quality healthcare will help us. Of course, we have to find out how can we pay for the service or how can we do this in a conscious medicine model and also uh, we can use different technologies, like integrating uh, uh, telemedicine with blockchain technology, which is what I'm trying to look at. And also, there was a mention of the, this P4 medicine, but what I have added is P6 medicine, where it is personalized, preventive, participatory, predictive, payment-optimized medical model that is purpose-driven. That is what I'm into. And uh, of course, uh, uh, when we have uh, uh, providers that, and payers that are working in sync with the patient's uh, 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 interest in mind. I think we will be able to do this kind of a care delivery process and of course care coordination, involvement of uh, proactive interventions with a high touch approach will be helpful. I just want to go to quickly to the last slide wherein if you see that 
U.S. healthcare expenditure is $3.2 trillion, 10 per 10K for each patient, 17.8 GDP, 75% of which is chronic care. But if you see that, U.S. military is 3.1% of GDP. So let's see why this problem is, because the, the, the whole process of food and healthcare industry has become so powerful, and uh, we just have to figure out how we can personalize, optimize, and do this P6 healthcare, not P4. And let's do the right thing because if we do the right thing, money will come and we will remove barriers to healing. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? So my concierge model is uh, helping the patients lose weight, get better, and improve value. So the patient who gave the interview there, he had five knee replacements, has had significant problems with venous insufficiency. Now I used to wrap him up. He was like a revolving door. I had to counsel him multiple times before he even agreed for the program. And finally he did it. And then now he doesn't even wear a compression hose. He doesn't have leg ulcers. His mobility is better. And he has to still walk with the walker, but still he's like totally a different person. He's like fully satiated and all. Yes, so it just comes down to num not the number of visits and comes down to giving value and not letting him get to the hospital. There is no dollar value. People try to come up with the dollar value. But when you're doing a service line that is so powerful, I mean, you can put any dollar value. And I think you were the one who were asking about questions internationally and earlier. And I was thinking about this, where when you deliver a service line, uh, like say for India for me, or in any other country from South America where, so uh, it's all about technology, which US has developed till now. But now we have gone into these chronic problems with nutrition being going bad. So if we are able to optimize the nutrition with food as medicine, I think we can do this. And it's not just going to be leapfrogging. It is going to be pole vaulting. So the question is, we in healthcare can pole vault if we can use technology and bring the people process and all these technologies together and take the payment out. If you think, imagine the process of involving blockchain technology with telemedicine and we have a game changing option where the patients become owners of their own health record. Any other questions? Okay, Thank Michelle. You. Thank you. So I'm a member of Obesity Medicine Association, and I do use medications, but I'm from the great state of Ohio, where we, I'm not allowed a fentermine for more than three months. And to tell you the truth, if I am doing uh, nutrition the right way, uh, people lose weight. And uh, with my low-carb, high-fat approach where people are in nutritional ketosis, which I am in right now, my mouth is telling me because of my fruity odor, yeah, so, so I am satiated and I'm happier. So the patients are like that. I mean, if you saw, he mentions that he's more satiated and all. So I did not have to use medication on him, but you know, it just comes down to the counseling and optimization, time-restricted eating, and finding out using technology, taking pictures and seeing and sitting down with the patient and the family and giving them recipes, menus, and understanding where they're coming. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, um, so it's empowering them. So like one of my patients, the second patient, he's now going to Florida. So, so he's, I told him, don't worry. I'm there, I'll be there with you in Florida whenever, and I can get on, I can, he, he can take the pictures of the food, and I can give him and, and talk and make sure things are happening, so. We have the last question there. Doctor, thank you for your talk. Uh, certainly a lot of us have uh, another service line in our practice, you've, ma you've mastered that, right? The wound care, right, those people are obese, and you're addressing that. You don't have to go looking for people, so congratulations. 
What kind of tools do you use to uh, help them find food ideas and recipes and then build the small wins so that there's compliance and they continue to move forward and lose the weight? Because we all know that's not an easy thing. So basically education. So the major problem in healthcare is two things. Uh, that is number one is uh, uh, communication. Number two is personalization. And if we can figure those out, we, if we can communicate to them and give them the tools and be there to counsel. Suppose if you want to come up with a solution of anything, you can create a health coach in your office and train the health coach with your thought process. And, and then they can become a health coach or say go hire an entity that is doing say a diabetes prevention program. They can deliver that for you. So you can bring in tools that are easily available and I take burden away, say a primary care doctor can refer to a diabetes program that is online now. So there are options, there are solutions. So you just have to be innovative, don't give up. I mean like, um, like, uh, like earlier you were mentioning, I mean like I have been dreaming of this whole process since 1995. I failed to start own centers in 2008, and that's what made me come to my uh, telemedicine inventions and, and the process of trying to get there. But it's so hard, but I am not going to give up. Thank you so much, Ravi. <laughs> Sorry.